Hi and welcome to our latest Photoshop tutorial. Um, this this time we're going to do something a little bit different. I normally try to do over the top kind of crazy uh, uh, themed images for the tutorials, but this time we're gonna we're gonna do a simple uh, actor's headshot, and this probably translate better to to what most photographers are working on. This could be a senior portrait. It could be. Uh, you know, a picture of your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Um, and the the uh, technique that I'm going to use is is quite the same as I I use on uh, my other work. Um, you know, I've I've found something that works really well for me, and and I vary it quite a bit. But it's not uh, not all uh, you know applicable just to the uh, the hero themed images so let me uh, just go ahead and show you uh, what this is obviously the after image uh, the before image is subtly different but uh, but different nonetheless um, as you can see her hair doesn't have the glow uh, there are there are some flyaways here let me just bring that back so you can see it um, so you see the glow and the flyaways also if you notice uh, in her her uh, uh, lips, you can see that uh, I brightened her lips up and I removed some of the uh, the color uh, changes in her lips, the little little dark spots. Um, I didn't want to change her much. I didn't want to remove her her freckles or, or make it uh, make it look as though she's somebody completely different. Um, for a couple of reasons, one is uh, there's nothing wrong with how she looks in this photo, and the second is this is an actress's headshot and. She needs an accurate representat representation of what she's going to look like when she shows up for that casting call. So, uh, all I did was I fixed I fixed her uh, eye shadows and her uh, her eyelashes a little bit, uh, brightened her hair, uh, cleaned up a couple of flyaways, and uh, smoothed out some of the tones overall. So let's uh, let's go and just take a quick look at uh, what I did here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to. Uh, turn all those layers back off and we'll go through one by one and then I'm going to spend a few minutes and show you the exact technique I use to uh, to do the eyelashes that seems to be something that a lot of photographers have trouble with doing and it's really easy it's one of the uh, the easiest it's it's semi time consuming but uh, uh, as far as technique goes it, it really only you know if you have a tablet it's super easy if you don't you can still do it uh, it just takes a little bit more time because you have to uh, refine those edges and, and kind of bring each lash to a point, which uh, the way I do it with, with layer masks make, makes it quite a bit easier than, uh, than it probably seems on the surface. So uh, right now we'll just go ahead and we're going to look at the first thing I did uh, is I, I brightened up her eyes, and that's simply with one of my... Uh, curves adjustments. I, I really like using curves adjustments. It keeps keeps for the most part the uh, the coloring the same. Um, you know if you move the RGB channel you can move any one channel for certain effects but I just lightened up her eyes and uh, as you can see I just changed the opacity of that layer. But if I left it at 100% she'd have these bright white eyes. So you know I dropped it down into the 50 some range. Uh, maybe a little bit better just drop down into the 40s. Uh, okay, so then, then I also noticed that uh, she's she has a little bit of a yellow tone, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it in the video, but in here around her mouth there was some yellowing, uh, just the result of the lights and uh, the overall warm tone of the image. She doesn't have jaundice or anything, uh, but it just the image will print better, uh, looks better on a uh, on a on a good uh, uh, good monitor, and uh, also uh, just has has that better feel. Uh, next thing uh, is this layer here which I had just created as a test so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. That was something I was just getting ready before the uh, before the uh, video. Um, the, um, the next thing we're going to do is look at how I lightened her hair and uh, let's get these off. Um, as you can see, again, my uh, my custom curve layers. Uh, again, I just brightened it quite a bit, and then I went in with my brush and uh, you know again on that mask, and uh, just used my white and black colored brushes. Uh, let me 
expand that a little bit. Uh, I went with uh, uh, pressure sensitivity on the opacity, not the size, so that I could just go ahead and paint. Uh, hardness, I always use down near zero when I do this sort of thing. And uh, let's go back and just brighten this part of her hair up again. And as you see, it just brightens up nicely. And then what I'll do is I will go in with a smaller, much smaller brush and just kind of remove, some, remove the brightness from some of the dark areas so that we leave the texture in the hair. And as you can see, you know, in just a minute here, we've, we've lightened her hair, but we've kept quite a bit of the texture uh, right there that, that darkened a little bit too much. So I just gently go in there and uh, go back over it. Uh, again, I, I know I say this every time, but because I'm using the layer masks, I have a non-destructive workflow. I can undo, redo everything, and uh, I don't damage the image. I don't uh, delete any work that I've done. I just, again, I just go back in and paint over, uh, over my mistakes. Uh, great way to work. Uh, now here is uh, a uh, working layer of her eyelashes. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we're going to come back and uh, we're going to create some eyelashes for her. So I'm going to leave those off for now. Um, this was actually a, another working layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete these. Uh, here, if you, uh, actually let me zoom in so you can see it better. Uh, I changed her eye color. Let's go over here. I brought her eyes back to their natural color. One of the things that I prefer to do, and you're not going to have this luxury, but uh, not always going to have this luxury, but uh, uh, this actress, you know, her headshot's very important to her. So we did the shoot. Uh, the shot, the shot took five minutes, maybe ten on the outside, but she stayed here for the Photoshop session, and uh, uh, endured me uh, making sure that she didn't have you know, things sticking out of her nose and everything else and cleaned up her, her minor uh, blemishes. Uh, but what I could do is I could also look at her in my my uh, studio that's that's correctly light balanced and I could actually look at her eyes and I could do a color match on her eye color uh, to the image. So so her eyes were a little bit greener than, uh, than they appeared in this photo. Uh, that happens a lot, eye color will change. So rather than just trying to guess or make them hyper green, I was actually able to go and uh, adjust my sliders and, and find the right color based on her sitting right next to me and uh, you know agreeing to the change and saying yeah that you know that looks right uh, very very convenient for this type of work uh, then uh, let's see what else did I do here uh, uh, I removed a lot of the redness if you see the redness in her chest uh, you know again these uh, these bear sensors uh, really they they bring the reds out, they make, uh, they make the red and skin tones kind of this hyper red and people that have red blotchy skin uh, look almost uh, freakish. Now in her case she has beautiful skin but she had a little bit of sun and, uh, and it came out very red in this image so I just went and again I uh, decreased the saturation in that area and I believe I that's all I did. I, uh, I would have thought that I had uh, drugged the uh, red slider a little bit, but I, I, uh, you know, I do that sometimes. Like I'll just grab the reds, and uh, I'll move the reds a little bit and bring them more towards the yellow. But all I really did here was uh, change the overall hue and uh, and decrease the saturation so it matched the uh, the skin around it. Um, then in this image. I actually increased the overall saturation just a little bit and uh, brought her brought some life back into uh, her overall skin color and it was just a minor plus nine on the saturation uh, brought brought around a healthy glow uh, one of the things that you might wonder is you know why don't I why do I go back through these rather than create an image I probably spent two hours tweaking this image and getting it the way that the way that it needs to be I uh, don't uh, uh, don't think that you want to sit here for two hours as I try different things uh, just to learn 10 minutes worth of information. 
so that's why I kind of go back through them. But you know, one of the things I'm going to do is um, the eyelashes are very important. Uh, so things that something that's often over missed, and I'm going to show you a really cool way to do the eyelashes. Um, so let's let's get started with that. I'm going to create a new eyelash layer. Let's just drag that to the top so that we uh, we don't confuse it. Uh, now we're going to need to pick a color for her eyelashes. And once again, I'm going to do the non-destructive workflow where we don't have to use the eraser at all. We're just going to paint the uh, the mask uh, back and forth. So we are going to go to Edit, Fill, Color, uh, and that picked. I forget. I'm not sure why I picked that color. I think it was already selected. So let me just do that again. Edit, Fill. Color. There we go. Uh, so this picked a nice brown color. Uh, that's what I had used earlier when I was when I was working on it. But I want to darken it a little bit. We we don't want to use black uh, because she shouldn't really use black mascara, being light complected with blonde hair. So uh, we're going to use an, a nice dark brown, and then we're just going to go ahead and create a mask for that. And I'm going to invert that mask so that uh, not, none of it fades through. We're going to zoom in here to her eyes and I'm going to set up my brush uh, which is going to be uh, size sensitive on the pressure. I'm going to make a very small brush and I'm going to trace the existing lash and I notice that I need to really bump up that hardness Go ahead and go like that. That's way too wide. So let's go in here like that. And now we're starting to, to trace over the existing lashes. And it looks pretty natural. So now we're going to go in and we're just going to fill in between. And we don't have to be exact here because we're, gonna, we're going to uh, spend quite a bit of time working on these lashes as we need to but we're just going to rough it in for now. I'm going to zoom back out. And as you can see there, they, they're starting to look pretty good. These, these lashes here on the inside need a little more curve to them, I think. So there's a couple things we could do. We could just go back here, delete them all, which again, we're not really deleting. We're not erasing. We're just painting black in that layer mask. A little bit shorter and one of the things that I like to do is you can zoom in as much as you need to and you can work with the curve the natural curve that your hand makes as you draw uh, so you can you can always zoom in to a point where you get a natural curve even if it's small and and you know I'm not uh, trained I'm not skilled in, in uh, sketching so being able to uh, to do that, to be able to turn my monitor, I have a uh, uh, a Wacom, the 21 inch, uh, uh, what are they called, uh, Cintiq. So I can I can rotate it. Uh, I can set it on my lap right now. It's laying flat on my desk. Uh, but I can rotate the whole monitor and use the natural curve of my hand. It's not like uh, like uh, you know back in the the day that you're you know if you're using uh, uh, a tablet or an easel or something where you can't just rotate it and work it with the natural flow of your hand and you can zoom uh, like I said you can zoom in real far and uh, make things work naturally for you see now that that looks better it's a little too uniform there so I'm gonna go ahead and add some lashes going the wrong way like we all have go ahead and we zoom back out and uh, it's looking pretty good there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same, the same type of work on the other side. And we'll notice that as we zoom back out, you know, it's coming together nicely. Her, her lashes are looking fuller and fuller. Um, so that's pretty much how we do the lashes and and remember let me uh, let me just create a uh, layer with a uh, 
the white background. Let me show you the brush dynamics. I'm going to fill that with white. And with the black brush, you can see the dynamics there. The harder I press, the darker the line, the thicker the line. And as I let it fade, it gets a little bit lighter and, and finer. So you just work on, on that brush motion, and that's what you use to draw your lashes. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because your your nobody's lashes are perfect, so it looks nice uh, with uh, with relatively little skill. I, I, I'll just say it the way it is. Uh, so one of the things that you're then going to want to do, and you could do this in the same layer or an additional layer. It's easier if you do it in, in a separate layer, uh, just because you can back out of it and not mess up the lashes that you've painted. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, create a duplicate layer and I'm going to uh, delete I, what I did is I made the whole background black there I just deleted everything in that uh, in that mask so now what we're gonna do is we are going to create some eyeliner and we just do that along here and through and paint that and again it's not going to look 100% at this this great magnification at least not at first so we're going to go ahead and do that in the top and the bottom and you can trace you know uh, her additional I mean her additional her, her existing eyeliner um, just go ahead and trace that and obviously that's way too much but uh, you get an idea for what we're doing now we just need to smooth that out once we have it traced overall. So let's uh, drop our hardness down quite a bit. We're going to turn off the, uh, the size changing. I'm just going to go in here. We're going to let it feather out a little bit. We're going to fill in. Okay. And then we zoom out a little bit, of course it looks a little cartoonish, and then we just drop that opacity down. So what we're doing is we're seeing her, her skin bleeding through, and then all of a sudden we have a much more natural looking uh, eyeliner that, that amplifies and uh, brings attention to those bright eyes. So that's a pretty quick uh, overview of how this type of image is created. Uh, again, if you have any questions, email me. I'll uh, I'll do another uh, tutorial on on whatever whatever you're you're looking for. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to check out my website, darrenshade.com. That's D-A-R-O-N-S-H-A-D-E.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, be sure to go to my website. You can download a PSD file. Uh, that will be a smaller version of this. I'll watermark the bottom layer so that. Uh, so that uh, you know it retains my uh, copyright information, but you'll be able to download it and play with it and and follow along if you choose to. All right, thank you very much.